proper cutlery. The only way to kill a wolf is to eat it up, teeth and all. You boil those until they are soft like eggs. Slurp them down with gravy, that's breakfast. Awful is next to the organs that hold secrets, divine entrails, ropes and ropes of sausage. Soak them in oil, salt, frankincense and myrrh, a few sprigs of rosemary. Tuck in a bay leaf for prosperity. At the sun's highest point, eat the basest parts. Dinner is the fine cuts. You'll need a good knife, not that old iron thing the woodsman gave you. Not the skinning knife, no, it's silver and shiny and modern. You need something domestic, ceramic, tame every cut. Conquest in cuisine. Chew, chew the meat, rare and red, taste it, no brine. The spread is divine, good wine, folded napkins, the sort of effort you never used to do. But when you sit down to your feast, every bite will taste and feel like you're chewing off your own hind leg. Um, you know, I write a lot of different things, uh, generally, but I think kind of poetry, um, tended to be something that we studied a lot in school and what uh, I was encouraged to often write in school. But I've been, I've been writing poems for a really, really long time, ever since I was a kid. And it felt like a, an easily performed medium. So it was something that was like easy to read and share. It was very accessible. Um, and I've, I took like about an eight year break in my adulthood of writing poems. I didn't write poems for a really long time and I kind of just fell back into it. Um, and this is one of, one of the pieces that came out of that. So I, now, now I write quite a few poems every year. So, um, this is part of a, a longer series of poems called, uh, Bestiary of a Plague, and it's about all of the animals that you become in captivity, and so proper cutlery is about, um, how to, how, how kind of the self-cannibalization that we were all forced to do during the, the quarantine portion of, of COVID-19. Um, so it is about preparing a wolf, but, you know, all the pieces that you eat and, um, and, the, and the order that you would eat them. So, you know, awful tends to be the organs and the organ meat, and that goes to sausage. And that's sort of the, the images I wanted to evoke. But what it, what it really comes down to is when you eat a wolf, you're eating yourself because you feel like a caged wolf. And so that's what proper cutlery is about. Uh, so, okay, uh, part one. Um, I... I wrote it to a Google Doc. Um, uh, it was it was an unromantic uh, exchange. I think it's one of a couple poems I wrote in one night, and it kind of just. I think the title came to me first, actually. Um, and I tend to read a lot of fairy tales, and I tend to be really inspired, inspired by folklore and, and, and fairy tales. And so it made sense to me during this really surreal time to incorporate a lot of fairy tale imagery into the stuff that I was working on. Um, so that's been a lot of the work that I've created in, in, in quarantine. And so this was a, a process of um, writing into a Google Doc. And then I, I have a writing group. I, I think every writer should. I think every writer should have a kind of group of people that they really trust with their work to tell them, you know, what's working and what's good and really kind of consider, you know, changing things or throwing out ideas or places where they get confused so that um, you can kind of create stronger work. I, th I think we don't put enough effort into revision. Uh, revision is a really important part of being a writer, especially to me. Um, all of my work gets better in revision. So that was the process of writing the poem. Is this in a poetic form? It is in free verse. So it is not emulating um, a sonnet um, or other kind of stylized uh, pieces. So, you know, it's, it's not Shakespearean, it, it's not really nonce uh, formatting, it's, and it's not really a language poem either, uh, but, it, but it's free verse. Read poetry. That's probably the biggest thing that is added to my work is that you have to read the work you want to create. Um, and I meet a lot, I meet a lot of poets that, that write poetry and don't read it. And I think it's really important to do that. So I recommend really starting off with finding a lot of different kinds of poets and seeing which ones you like and seeing which ones you don't. Um, and not, and having an emphasis on different eras, you know, you, you know, and reading from different cultures and translations, all of that really adds to your dimension and understanding of language. Because while, you know, stories are wonderful and kind of, uh, operate in their own really important development. And I recommend people read stories for writing stories as well. Poems are so incredibly condensed and juicy in their language and their narrative that it, it 
must inspire the reader to really consider words. It's not just about message. It is about kind of the individual parts and how it lays on the page. And all of that is really well studied by reading the work. So reading and understanding a poem, uh, I think the best way to, to do it is to read it several times, which I know is, is, is a kind of a cheap answer. But going line by line and seeing where the line breaks hit and what kind of emphasis that creates. So writing a poem is about, you know, obviously taking words and creating a message in kind of a short form, but also the way that the poetry, like the poetry looks and the, the places where the reader takes a breath or where there's kind of augmentation of the line is meant to kind of disrupt the reader's vision and kind of alter the message. So I would really focus on where you see those line breaks, where you see those pauses, extra spaces, maybe added punctuation. Um, I, I recommend kind of going line by line and um, really focusing on imagery and um, and, and then emotion, like what, what you walk away feeling after the poem. And it may be sometimes the thing that you that you walk away with is confusion, and that's always fine too. Um, but I think it is best to kind of consider um, what kind of language the poets really used and focus on how they've organized that, that language. Oh man, so <laughs> there's so many. Um, I actually do a, a um, on my Instagram accounts, I, I read a poem for every uh, lunar phase uh, because I think I want more poetry in the world, and uh, also I think poems are really, really good for kind of talking about things that like about emotions and, and about the moon. Um, right now, I just finished uh, Denner Rod's Scattered and Reels uh, with Milk and Cake Press, which is a really beautiful collection about living in the Iranian diaspora in America. Um, also, Margaret Atwood is a phenomenal poet. Uh, I love um, You Are Happy. That's her collection from the 1970s, which is, is really, really phenomenal. She, she is really good at incorporating great sweeping myths into her work, and her work's so startling. Um, that's the, those, are, those are two that I, that I really liked. Also, Saturday Night Sage by Noah Lekas. He's a, he's a poet out of, out of Racine, uh, Wisconsin, and uh, he he's a really good modern beat poet. So if you're if you're really into the beats, that's what that's what I recommend. Uh, I think if I'm gonna do a shout out to an organization, Nomadic Press does a lot of really good work, and all of their books are really really good. So buy them all, um, and I, I really love the poetry that's coming out of Nomadic Press. Um, and if you want to find me online, I'm LaurenEParker.com, um, and fuck yeah, Lauren Parker on Instagram. <laughs>